No, no, no. I would like to talk about Sydney. You are a Canadian. Yeah. <gasps> this is an interesting perspective. Yeah. You are a Canadian yeah. that came to Sweden. Mm. Like, come on. First of all, you came from Canada to Sweden yeah. to this dark country. Yeah. What are your thoughts on fika? Uh, the coffee is necessary. The coffee? Yeah, it's yeah. necessary. Yeah, but I'm not a. It's necessary not a because of the darkness, person. or what? Yeah, exactly. To get okay. through the winters, <laughs> the depression. How many, co <laughs> how many fikas do you have per day? Uh, four. Four. And I stop at like two o'clock. Really? Yeah, yeah. I won't sleep. Yeah. I can drink at like eleven o'clock and I'll fall asleep. That's... <laughs> I'd be awake till the next yeah. Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. But what are, what are your thoughts on on the the buns and the, all the stuff? Yeah, I like donuts. Tim Hortons. Have you heard of Tim Hortons? Oh, but that's, that's Canadian. Yeah, that's Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> that's not Swedish. So, so you see, guys, not yeah. everybody likes the Swedish fika, actually. Uh, they uh, more enjoy the coffee. Yeah, I like half of it. I like the coffee. Yeah. Well, that's good enough. Yeah. Welcome to Coffee with Baselot, Kevin. Yeah, my first time on. Yeah. Hopefully many not more. Not the last. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, you will be answering questions when it comes to technology. And uh, so representing Baseload from that perspective, uh, you're working not only with Baseload, but also like to set a technical platform together with other uh, contributors. How is that going? Yeah, it's great. But you, uh, yeah, it, there, there was a question, right? Was it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I'm going to come to that soon enough. <laughs> 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 Who is the driving force in this conversation? <laughs> okay, 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 you'll get your question. Are you in a hurry? <laughs> no, 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 no. But because there was, um, you had made the assumption yeah. that I was going to talk about technology, and ah. you, you were correct. Yeah. But there are many answers to, to one problem. Okay, yeah. that's an yeah. interesting thought about it. So let's yeah. go d directly to the question then, because that's true. You got a question uh, from Mr. Malcolm Ross. What do we need to do to rapidly and radically accelerate the deployment of commercial geothermal energy projects? What are the limiting factors and can they be changed, eliminated? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're done. <laughs> done. End of podcast. No, but uh, because you kind of surprised me a little bit with saying technology. Yeah. Because I guess you assumed that I was going to talk about technology, and I was. But I just wanted to put a disclaimer for Malcolm. Yeah. Like if if he asked you this question, or let's say let if he asked uh, you've had Simon on before. Yeah. If he asked Simon based on his experience, right? He's heavy in the geothermal industry. Comes from a finance background. He'd probably say. Politics. Or, yeah, yeah, or drill, drill, yeah. drill sustainably. You get, you get more drills in there. Ask you, you might maybe Communication, not. Communication, marketing, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, let's get Elon Musk to tweet about it. Mm -hmm. right? And both, both of those answers are right. So because you're asking me, yes, you gave it away. I'm talking about technology. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe Good Malcolm yeah. wanted a, a different different path but I can give him my my thoughts on that yeah absolutely yeah but I agree with you there are many yeah. perspectives in this and of course the question will depend the answer will depend on who we ask yeah in a there sense. Are life mm. experiences and education training so on but it, it is quite interesting with the technology piece you had uh, free publicity the switch mm. great podcast everyone should check it out yes they should if you haven't go subscribe yeah and I and I listened to your last one with Daniel Daniel Akinin from yeah, Microsoft, that's yeah? That's right. And he gave, a, maybe in a completely different context, but he talked about like solar panels mm. and how like 20 years ago they weren't even economically viable. Mm. And now I mean, every person could see a business case for it with their own home, right? Mm. Why is that? Was the technology dramatically improved, lowered the cost uh, for, for barrier to entry, right? Yeah. Uh, other, I could even talk about nuclear, like fusion energy. Mm -hmm. So that's been around for a long time, but there's been like dramatic changes to the technology improvements. And now we're starting to see like, hey, not so in distant future, we're going to have new energy sources there. And mm -hmm. an example there is a company, Tay Technologies. They partnered with Google Cloud Services, which is what a lot of companies are doing now. They're partnering with you know, a, a cloud provider. Uh, and the maintenance process for them used to take, like they switch a piece of hardware 
used to take a month to test everything, make sure it works right. And now they deployed a simple cloud service from Google. They've got that down for from months to like an hour. Mm. And now what that does is is now they can focus more time and capital on the complicated stuff, the actual, you know, how do how do they handle plasma that's like millions of degrees and pressures we can't produce on Earth. So mm -hmm. they're finding these like small wins with the technology to help them progress and advance. And I really think in geothermal, we need to start doing that, like today, now. We need to start finding those small wins. And it doesn't have to be like these dramatic exploratory technologies. It could be stuff that's already mainstream today, like IoT hubs and mm -hmm. analytics. Can, can you give an example? I mean, you've <clears throat> been talking to different people in the industry. What would be like the low hanging fruits to fix? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I would say the operations and maintenance stuff would be the low-hanging fruit because mm -hmm. that technology is already mainstream. It's like uh, in any industry, you have IoT hubs and it's centralizing, collecting all the data, and then it's pushing to analytic services. So, in the geothermal industry, I would say you have some some basic stuff that tells you what what it is, like what is the temperature. But in other industries, you know, it's a, why is it that temperature? Or, okay, so the difference here is that you don't only get an answer, you get the analysis yeah, as well. Yeah, the analysis well. behind yeah. it. And to go even further, <clears throat> a lot of industries will say, or are using services that will, will tell you what will it be in the future based on all of these uh, setups you have mm -hmm. with the equipment. So that's kind of low-hanging fruit that geothermal could already improve on today. Mm. And if they did that, then again, a similar scenario as the fusion. Then they would have more capital and more time to invest in the hard stuff. And the hard stuff is where the risk is. It's like uh, doing the initial assessment, finding out where is there a good spot to, to set up shop, basically. Mm -hmm. And that, I would say, is still, there's still some mainstream uh, services, technologies you can use, but you have to be willing to get into the exploratory stuff as well. Mm -hmm. So that's. So, what do you think that the industry of geothermal will gain? If we talk about if we talk about like things that are not so technically like terms, is it m money we can save? Is it time? What are the biggest like factors that we can actually get? Yeah, uh, both, both. So I'll start with I mean just the efficiencies, and that's kind of um, you'll you'll save time and money by implementing technology, mm -hmm. of course. The other end of the spectrum is that you'll start to get uh, noticed a lot more. I don't know if you remember at the, sometime around the geothermal conference in Iceland, mm -hmm. there was COP26. Yes. And I remember there was a feeling that a lot of people were kind of disappointed that geothermal wasn't mentioned as much as it should be, and I agree. Yeah. And my perspective on that is if we want to get noticed, we need to start coming up with like really great reference cases and showing like, okay, processes that used to take, you know, months. Hey, look, check out, check out what uh, this geothermal company has done. They've implemented some quite simple AI technology and it's taken it from months to hours. And I think when we, people start seeing those cases, you'll start getting attention of uh, investors, you'll start getting attention of governments. I mean, governments should take on some of the risk for, for this as well. Mm -hmm. But when you start getting their attention, then I think you'll start getting no more noticed at these events like COP26. That, that's quite important. So you see, in the, in the beginning of this conversation, you said that it depends on whoever we ask. But in the end, <laughs> if, you, if we manage to improve the technology, we will get noticed more. So we will get more communication. And we will get in, when we get noticed more, we will get more attention from politics and, and yeah. government. Yeah, yeah, I truly believe that. I mean, yeah. a reference case is so important and it's, you can talk the talk, but you need to walk the walk as well. And if we can show we're walking the walk, that's going to capture people's attention. And yeah, I think it's. I think that's a brilliant way to end this conversation because uh, the reason why we do this baseload capital FICA, uh, Coffee with Baseload, is to try to show and answer the questions out there. So we need more examples. We need more questions from you guys. Uh, help us. If you have any cases out there that you want to showcase, that you want to discuss, send them in to us because it would be really interesting to make sure that they come out and we can communicate them to the world. Thank you, Kevin, for joining me with, with my FICA.
And uh, as a Canadian, <laughs> yeah, as a Canadian, I won't push you to eat the fig. Actually, I can take a bite. You can yes. take a bite. Oh, good. He joined me. I, I kind of like that. Cheers, cheers. You go cheers. So much. Che you cheers. Go cheers. cheers. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> Dude, I'm I'm getting there. <laughs>